Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use my specialty action set that I've created to, to easily make half drop patterns in Photoshop. In the description below, I will leave a link to where you can purchase these actions. So we'll go ahead and start by creating a new file. These actions are designed to work with a specific canvas size, which is 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels. For this, I'm going to have my resolution set to 300 pixels per inch with color mode as RGB color, background content set to transparent, and then I'm going to go ahead and click create. So after purchasing these actions, you'll want to import them into Photoshop. So make sure you have your actions panel open. So you're going to go to window and select actions here. From here, you're going to go to the menu options and you're going to click on load actions. You'll click on the file that says half drop pattern set E with the extension of .atn, which is the file format for actions in Photoshop. And then you'll just click on open. Here in my actions panel, I have my half drop pattern set E here. Um, we'll click to hit the arrow here so we can see all the actions here. When it comes to naming, you'll see HD stands for half drop, 1, T stands for one tone. You'll also notice there are versions of two tone. And then each action will tell you the type of pattern it will create. So let's go ahead and test this first uniform one here. Let's go ahead and use the custom shape tool. So I'll click it here. We'll go ahead and click on the shape icon here. I'm going to select from one of the preloaded uh, shapes here. I'm going to click on this flower folder here. And then I'm going to select one of the flowers here. And then we will go ahead and draw it out. Holding the space key will just allow me to reposition it. And then we will go ahead and set the shape there. Before I use any of my actions, I am going to convert this layer to a smart object. It's always a good idea if, if you ever want to make any changes. So we'll go ahead and click right click convert to smart object here. So we'll click on our actions panel here again. Let's go ahead and test out this first action here. We'll hit the play button. And what you'll notice is it has automatically created a pattern here. In the layers panel, we'll see a group here of all the different instances of this pattern here. And then what you'll also notice is in the patterns panel here is that it automatically saves your pattern for you here. What we notice is that our flower is already too big. In this case, we can double click into our smart object. We'll make sure this layer is selected. I'm going to hold the shift and option key, and then I'm just going to scale it down here. We'll click on OK. I'm going to go ahead and save that command or control S to save this, and then we'll exit out command or control W to close it. And now we have our pattern. In this case, I will need to resave this pattern. So I'm going to hit this plus icon to save our pattern. You can give it a name and then click on OK. And we have our new pattern here. Let's go ahead and test this pattern in a new document. So I'm going to go to File New. We're going to use the dimensions of digital scrapbook paper, which is 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels. We'll set resolution to 300 pixels per inch, RGB color mode, background contents to transparent, and click on Create. And then let's click on our new pattern layer here, and it will be added to our canvas. Let's go ahead and give our pattern a color. So I'm going to add a solid color adjustment layer. From here, you can adjust the slider. Let's go ahead and try a blue color here. We'll click on OK, and then we will right click to create a clipping mask. And then I'm just going to duplicate this layer, right click to duplicate layer. We'll drag it to the bottom. We'll select a new color. Let's just go ahead and use white. Clicking on OK and we have our pattern. If we click on our pattern fill layer, we can see our original, which was a little bit big. But you might like that look of where the flower kind of connects to each other versus um, a separate here. So we'll jump back into our new document and test some of the other actions. 
So we'll click on this group layer here. We'll click on the trash can. And in this case, we will hit group and contents. And that way it quickly gets rid of those extra copies. You can turn on your visibility again and we will test a new action. So let's go ahead and test this next one. We have our one tone vertical by column. So we'll go ahead and play that action here. And we can see that it has changed the orientation vertically for this object. And we can see that it has saved it in our patterns panel here. We can jump into our new document. We can test it here. We can see how that pattern looks compared to our original here. We have our new one here. So if we jump back in this document, if you want to see how your pattern looks in this document as well, I'm going to um, zoom out. So I'm going to hit command or control with the minus key. You could always turn on the pattern preview mode. So we're going to go to view pattern preview. And here we can see how it looks. If you want to add a solid color layer here, we'll hit FFF for white. Uh, you can do so, but if you are going to use uh, the actions again, you want to make sure that this color fill layer is turned off. That way uh, it can save it with a transparent background. So we'll go ahead and delete that group here. Group and contents. We'll test our new object we'll put position that behind we'll test our object again so let's look at a two-tone action so in this case we use our vertical um, by a column with one tone let's go ahead and try a two-tone version uh, this time let's do the the vertical with the zigzag so we'll click on this action we'll hit play you can see that it changed up the transparency here. So let's test that in our document here. We'll select that pattern. We can see that we have different tones of our color here. And then that variability happened with the zigzag of our pattern. So we had our original one here and then we have our new pattern there. And then if you change the uh, color in your color fill layer, it will automatically adjust because it changed the opacity of that object. Let's go ahead and jump back into this layer here. We'll go ahead and delete that group, group and contents here. We'll turn back on our object. I'm going to go ahead and just rotate this object a little bit here so we get a little bit more uh, variability of how our flower looks and then let's test out a, another action when working with actions you can look at your actions in this view but you can also use button mode to access button mode you're going to click on this icon here and we'll select button mode here in this case it's a little bit harder to um, read exactly what action you can always move uh, the actions here and it will be um, we can see it as one column versus two. The next action I want to test here is this half drop one tone with rotation four way. So we'll go ahead, when you're in button mode, you can just click on the button and it will automatically run the action here. And what we notice is because of the way our object is shaped is it makes it, so it doesn't quite uh, work in our spacing. So let's see if we can adjust that here. Let's go ahead and click on our smart object and then because of that I am going to duplicate this layer. So we will duplicate it that way we have our original position here. With this one let's go ahead and bring it down and see if that makes it look any better. So let's save that command or control S and then we will jump back in to our original so that gave us a little bit better position, but I'm also going to move it a little bit more towards this leaf here. So we'll just bring it to the side a little bit here. We'll save that command or control S, jump back into our original. And now it's a little bit to, we're still getting a little bit of that touch there. So we'll bring this up a little bit here. And I'm only having to do this tweak just because of the shape of this object here. Um, and that way we get a little bit better spacing. 
I'd almost bring it back just a little bit more towards this leaf and I'm being a little bit picky on this one here but we'll save that again there we have a little bit better balance of our spacing here uh, with this asymmetrical object here so with that I like this so I'm gonna go ahead and save that version of the pattern we'll go ahead and test it here I'm going to bring my actions back in to my panel here so we can see and then we will select our pattern here and we get a little bit more of that scattered because we have that four-way rotation of our object so that is a fun action we had to do a little bit of tweaking because of the shape of our object but it created this fun pattern here I hope you enjoy exploring these actions to create fun half drop patterns in Photoshop. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Again, I will leave a link in the description to where you can purchase these actions. Thanks again for watching. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.